Uh, I'm Roman Cook, and I'll percent of the nation's electricity by 2030, and 35% by 20. When energy is incorporated into the U.S. power generation mix, more qualified workers are needed at all levels. Competition, or CWC, contributes to the creation and maintenance of America and the transition to a clean energy economy. The competition's main objective is to prepare students from multiple disciplines to enter the wind energy workforce by places. The competition tasks many competitors with building a small-scale wind turbine. And with that, I'll dive into our specific design. So first, we started with the blades. The blades in the hub are both 3D from onyx material in order to ensure that they can withstand um, the forces that are they're experiencing at higher wind speeds. Our generator is homemade and consists of two rotors and a stator sandwiched in between. The rotors are magnetic plates with 3D printed magnet spacers, enabling them to hold 12 bar magnets each. The stator is an epoxy disc of copper wire arranged in a three phase design. Here's a CAD model of our nacelle. The numbered images will help me to give a quick walkthrough of all. We have the e brake, two is a disc brake, three is the dynamic pitot tube. Four is a thrust bearing, five is our optical encoder, six is our homemade generator, seven our yaw, eight is a, is a compartment for electrical component housing. Since we are producing power and the turbine has to be somewhat automated, a couple of electrical subsystems are required. Education, power regulation, controls, and an electrical load. Detailed schematics are complete and are included at the end of these slides uh, for further questions. The left image shows our rectification and printed circuit board, and the right shows our power regulation and printed circuit board. Next, I'll discuss our sensors. These provide uh, crucial information to our microcontrollers for making automation decisions. The optical encoder seen on the screen senses the rotation of the shaft, and the Arduino program converts that information into a rotational speed or measured in rotations per minute, per minute or RPM. The optical, optical encoder is mounted to the shaft, and then in the bottom you can see the electrical connections. Next, I'll discuss the different that's seen in the top left. So it has two tubes. One stays with the sensor in the nacelle and measures the static pressure, while the other is fed through the hollow shaft to the tip of the the wind turbine to read the incoming dynamic pressure. This is shown in the top right image. Using these two pressure values and Bernoulli's equation, uh, we the incoming wind speed. At the bottom, you can see the electrical connections for this sensor. The image on the top left of this screen shows the connections for our braking system. So this subsystem takes the information from the sensors mentioned and continuously updates and checks for wind speed values and RPM values that should trigger braking. The servo used for this subsystem rotates between zero and 180 degrees. And then the PQ12 mini uh, micro linear actuator shown at the bottom of the screen uh, is used for emergency braking. The e-brake subsystem uses two of these actuators to clamp down on the shaft to when a stop button is pressed or when power is disconnected from the turbine. You can see the, that full um, system on the right. microcontrollers for all of our subsystems within the turbine. In order to create a cohesive design, GitHub was also used to share code between team members over the course of this project. To keep the teams. So the two that were completed thus far with the dynamometer testing and rotor strength testing, the bit of media on the left shows our of this was to show that the team was able to build a dynamometer, in this case, and we were able to couple the shaft and also read in the speeds and also control those speeds. So I'll play that video. A 
He's going, he's actually adjusting the, the speed. Next, we had the rotor strength test. First, we had to calculate our runaway speed, which our turbine is no longer producing um, useful power. So it's maxed out and it's over, um, it's, it's, um, it's surpassing what the load can provide. Um, and so normally for turbines, this is a dangerous speed. So we had to calculate that and show that our materials for that video. We calculated that our runaway speed was around 47 ramping up to that speed and ensuring that nothing uh, fails on the turbine. Because of the global pandemic, the competition has been altered quite a bit. Um, instead of taking the turbine to be tested, we will be submitting a complete technical report discussing all of our design decisions and findings thus far, and that will be evaluated by a panel. Our team is still actively iterating and improving our designs through simulations and models, and we will continue to do so until the submission in early May. With that, that's the end of the presentation, and I'd like to thank you all for your time and attention, as well as open up for questions.